Hi, welcome to San Antonio Snippets. Uh, I'm Lisa Carey, uh, breast medical oncologist from the University of North Carolina, and I'm get joined here by... I'm Otto Matsker, a medical oncologist at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston. And, and we have the pleasure of talking about AFT38, more commonly known as Patina, which was reported earlier today, uh, presented by Dr. Metzger uh, at the oral sessions, and uh, super exciting data that we're gonna talk about. So, Otto, could you just summarize quickly the, the rationale and the nature of the interventional uh, trial? Absolutely. Patina is a randomized phase three study that evaluates the addition of pulbocyclid for patients that are diagnosed with virtual positive or positive disease in the metastatic setting. This builds on a strong preclinical rationale that we can block the CDK46 pathway as a way to overcome resistance to anti-HER2 based therapies. And we also know that the CDK4-6 inhibitors, they can potentiate the effects of endocrine therapy. So here we have a double hit as a hypothesis for our study. Yeah, I mean, it's a super impressive study and it does really build on, in these patients, we can give endocrine therapy and anti-HER2 therapy. That's common, particularly after an induction phase, which is chemo, Cleopatra-like induction. And then commonly people stop the chemo in transition to an AI plus HP. And then in this study... That this is exactly how the study starts. Once patients stop this induction uh, phase, this induction with PHP for six to eight cycles, and have CR, PR, or stable disease, and so they are randomized to, for the addition of pubocyclib or to be in the control arm with the same agents. This is a study, it's a large phase three study designed to show the efficacy, the superiority of pubocyclib. So the study randomized 518 patients and they had a 9% power to show the superiority of pubocyclib for this specific population. The study passed through true interim analysis and what we reported today is the final PFS analysis. Which was? <laughs> We are very happy when we saw the curves showing the superiority of pavocyclib when compared to the control arm. The median progression free survival was 29.1 months versus 44.3 months for patients treated with pavocyclib. This translated into a hazard ratio of 20, 0.74 or 26% reduction uh, in risks of having a PFS event. You know, it really is a remarkable trial and, and a real testament to Dr. Metzger's perseverance uh, in addition to the patients who stuck with it. You know, the, the truth is that when the trial was designed, the assumption for baseline PFS with endocrine therapy and HP was 13 months. And as you just heard him say, it was actually 29 months on the trial, increased to 44 months with the addition of the CDK4-6 inhibitor. So, these patients were already doing better than we thought they were gonna do. And then we added more than a year of progression-free survival um, uh, with the addition of a CDK4-6 inhibitor. And I think, you know, it leaves a lot of questions. First, overall survival is immature. Um, and, and we don't really know when we're gonna hit the required number of, of uh, uh, overall survival events. The second is, and I'll, I'll let you say what you think are the key questions. The key questions that I think have to be answered is, number one, what actually is the role of the induction phase of this, right? We all give Cleopatra-style chemotherapy plus HP. Then we, then we stop the chemo, as was permitted in Cleopatra, and we go to something else. In the trial, it was required that you couldn't progress on that regimen, so that was one of the eligibility criteria. But I'm saying in real practice, I don't know that you need to put the patients through chemotherapy before going to this highly active regimen. What do you think? Oh, Lisa, thank you. This is an excellent point. And I think that what's gonna happen in reality is that clinicians, they are gonna keep doing a very good job in knowing who are the patients who need to get some chemotherapy. And there are many patients who have indolent disease and they can go straight into a regimen that has minimal toxicity, no chemotherapy related toxicity. So my gut feeling is that clinicians are gonna be able to identify who these patients are, and we will have more confidence with the regimen that's gonna be given to these patients, given the results that we saw today with Patina, again, showing more than a year of progression-free survival. This builds upon 
a control arm of a study that did exceedingly well with 29 months and we add 15 months on top of that. So we're really uh, thrilled with these results. And that's the reason why we decided to present it so soon here at San Antonio 2024. Yeah, it, and it really is quite stunning. And just remember, through this simple machinery of a CDK4-6 inhibitor, which we're all very familiar with and we use all the time, you're now circumventing endocrine therapy resistance, which is hormone receptor positive breast cancer, and you're circumventing HER2 resistance because they're all HER2 positive. You know, my, I'm anticipating that these patients are going to be doing just exceptionally well as we start to, to bend the needle even more with additional targeted therapies. Sarah Herbert's the uh, discussant, did a terrific job, and she made the point that we have focused so much on subverting just HER2 using better and better anti-HER2 mechanisms. But you can get at preventing anti-HER2 resistance and endocrine resistance through things that are different that we haven't done until this trial. Absolutely. And just briefly, I think it's important for us to touch base on the toxicity profile. And what we observed on Patina, it's very similar to what we know with the toxicity profile of bubocyclib for this patient population. We did see a slightly higher incidence of diarrhea than we were expecting to see by having treated these patients on the clinical trial. And there'll be more work into it. We're going to look into the data carefully to see if the diarrhea has any relation to the prior chemotherapy that the patients were receiving prior to going to the study, because as a clinician, uh, I would say that it feels very similar to the side effects of bubocyclib from the label that we have to treat patients with advanced disease. And, and so uh, it's a very well tolerated regimen. And just for completion, I want to say that we the dose is the same and we're using exactly the same monitoring strategies, very similar to what we do in our daily practices when treating patients with ear positive disease. Those are, very, those are super important points. I'm glad you made them. So uh, thank you for listening. A super exciting time to, uh, to be talking about patina and the implications of patina going forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.